Good morning. When I open the door, it feels like I'm back in Singapore. Those were the exact words of retired Singapore Gurkha, Mr. Top Bahadupun, when he presented me to his place all the way in Kathmandu, Nepal, miles away from home. And I can still remember the first time I entered his house. There was a glass a mural, a painting of this mythical creature with a head of a lion, the body of a fish, also known as the Malayan, uh, a national symbol of Singapore. And you can find this at the mouth of the Singapore River. And may I just ask a show of hands, how many of you keep a miniature of the Malayan at home, especially with Singaporeans here? No, the Gurkhas have two. Three for some of them. And they proudly display it in their living rooms. And I ask them why. They're like, to remember my time here la, for serving 27 years, just want to have something that I can remember of Singapore. And such an attachment uh, still leaves me with warm memories, uh, meeting them and knowing them. And it's just something which is worth sharing. And I'd like to share this with you today. But who are the Gurkhas? The Gurkhas are a paramilitary unit, and some of the things that they do include uh, protect key installations, as well as uh, ministerial residences. And you can identify them with their trademark broad rim khaki hat, as well as the curved blade that they keep behind, which is known as the kukri. Uh, besides what they wear, um, they are also a, a tremendous legacy all around the world. You can find them in places like Hong Kong, you can find them in places like Brunei, and Singapore, and especially, of course, the United Kingdom, where they serve sort of like the Queen. And they've been here even before Singapore's independence, which is in 1949. And for the Gurkhas, um, they live here in a centrally located region, uh, a barricaded compound known as Mount Vernon Camp. And with regard to the Gurkhas, they are what I call this community which are visibly invisible. What do I mean by that? Uh, you see them exist, you kind of like have an idea what they do, and till today they still got uh, 38 Oxley Road. Anyone knows where that is? Okay, uh, the residence of the former Prime Minister. And, but till today we do not know exactly what are their stories. What are some of the things they remember about Singapore? What are the things that they hold dear to? And this is one big gap which I try to do. I'm a photographer. I take photographs and I write stories. And uh, for the Gurkhas, they, um, what I did was collect an anthology of portraits and short stories of their time here in Singapore. And so for them, they served for 27 years, and once they are done, together with their families, they return back to Nepal. This is a photograph of Kathmandu. Uh, and you can see here, town planning is very interesting. Um, but it is a charming place with charming people. And for today, um, there are stories I'd like to share with you, stories of the Gurkhas. And when we think about the future we will make, how about we talk about uh, where we have been and where not just we as in uh, residences here, but people who have been, who are inherently foreign because this, the Gurkhas, they come here, they serve, and once they're done, they go back. And what are the stories that we can learn from them? And basically, it's two things, that they actually have shared experiences as well as a deep sense of history. And that cements their time and place here in Singapore. But the first story I want to share with you with uh, Mr. Nar Bahadur Gurung. Uh, he served during the 1950s all the way till 1970s. And for him, when I first met him, uh, he straight away asked me in Malay, Awak sudah makan? Which actually means, have you eaten? And I was just uh, astounded because here I am, miles away from home, hearing someone speaking my native language. I'm Singaporean Malay. And till today, he even joked, he said, oh, sometimes we just talk in Malay for fun, you know, just to practice, even though their, their native language is Nepali. And uh, they have assimilated to such a great extent, which leaves me uh, fascinated. And it then struck me that actually, for the Gurkhas, uh, their role here, especially the contingent itself, was thrust into importance during the 1964 racial riots, which is still a large imprint in Singapore society today. The racial riots was between... Uh, the major races, such as the Chinese and the Malays. And for them, they had to use the language. That language, which was the language used by our parents and grandparents, to tell them, hey, uh, keep the peace, stay calm, 
everything is okay, if it's beyond curfew, please go back home. And for them, it still stays with them till today. And uh, like I said, the use of this native language. Not just Mr. Narbadu Gurung, there's also Mr. Shiba Kumar Gurung. Uh, for him, he's a bit younger. He served during the 80s till about the middle of the 2000s. And for him, he was born and raised here. How come, you might ask? His father was a pioneer Singapore Gurkha. And his father served from about the early 1950s. And uh, he was born and raised here. And he went to the schools that some of our parents went to. And some of the things that they did include playing uh, by the drainage, collecting guppies, <laughs> collecting... Uh, fishes and also plucking fruits from trees. And when he returned back again, he brought his wife and his children and he pointed them to the exact same spot where he played. And the children went, Daddy, don't kid me, you know, like, you know, they will still play here, you know. Uh, but what he's trying to show is that that was the place where he had. And these shared experiences and stories are something he shares. I mean, for him, his father for sure would share these stories with uh, himself as well as, and he's continuing the tradition. And these are the things that actually cements their attachment to Singapore. Um, I was fortunate enough after I completed the portrait series, created a book, went back and did a traveling exhibition in Nepal. And I met them again, uh, the three of them. You can see Mr. Narbahada Gurung on your extreme uh, right and a few others which I'll introduce later. And for them, they feel a sense of kinship to know that they've been here, they serve here for so long and they reach out to you. And it's not just that. Uh, they also have this, what I call, a deep sense of history. And this is a photo I dig out uh, during my time meeting them. And for the Gurkhas, they have a lot of this collection of old photographs, which I use to sort of like rejig their memory in terms of certain chapters in Singapore's history. And this is a photograph of them marching down during the National Day Parade, which is uh, Singapore, celebrating Singapore's independence. And for Mr. Chandra Prasad Guru, for him, it says this with great pride that we took part in the parade. Uh, and that photograph was in the late 60s, and he was saying that he can still remember, you know, like seeing over there where the cabinet ministers in their trademark white clothes, because that is the trademark white of the People's Action Party, as well as uh, recognizing the space that he was actually having the parade, which is this big field known as the Padang, where key Singapore milestones uh, were celebrated there also. And this deep sense of history uh, leaves me wondering that for them, they get a ringside seat to observing Singapore's transformation. And of course, the biggest narrative of uh, Singapore, which is the transformation from third world to first world. And they're not just any Gurkhas, they are our Gurkhas for us to remember and to know and to collect stories so that we can understand better ourselves from a foreigner's perspective and also shape the future that we make. And before I go, I just want to leave you one more story of Mr. Kishore Kumar Gurung. Uh, for him, uh, he, uh, most of the Gurkhas, if you were to meet them, they are very happy go lucky. They have a lot of funny stories to share with you. And for him, he says, So, do you know uh, National Day songs? And for us, we have National Day songs to help build up uh, Singapore spirit. And he broke out into a song and he sang, There was a time when people said that Singapore won't make it, but we did. And he kept emphasizing the last three words, but we did. And he's like, How come you're so sad about it, you know? You all should be more proud. You all should go. But we did. And he said that for me, I'm Nepali. I'm a foreigner here, but I'm very proud of what this country has done. And with that, thank you. <laughs>